4 of the seventh root of a to the sixth b minus 1 to the third over 16. So remember, we have to start with the seventh root, which means 1 over 7, which goes in front log base 4 of a to the sixth b minus 1 to the third over 16. And then remember, quantities that come from the top will have positive in front of the log. Quantities that come from the bottom will have what in front of the log? Minus. Perfect, excellent. So 1 over 7, put a bracket. Log base 4 of a to the sixth plus log base 4 of b minus 1 to the third, but minus log base 4 of 16. Is this okay? Is this okay so far? Yes? We agree with this? Yes? All we have to do is move the power in front and change this into what it equals to. Remember, log base 4 of 16 is whatever. We start from the base. Base raised to blah equals 16. So what could this be? Very good. So now put the 6 in front and distribute 1 over 7. 6 over 7 log base 4 of a plus 3 over 7 log base 4 of b minus 1 minus 2 over 7 is the final form. Let me know if this is clear. I distributed 1 over 7 to 2. And the bottom of the order. Ah, got it. Is that clear? I have 2, and I have to distribute 1 over 7. 1 over 7 times 2 over 1 is 2 over 7. Is that okay? Yes, this whole thing is 2. Okay. 1 over 7 times 2 over 7 is 2 over 7. Okay. Better? Mm -hmm. Everyone? Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Very good. Next question, please. Anything else? Nine. Number 9. In number 9, we have 3 log 2x plus 1 minus 4 log x. Of course, we have to address the power first. The power goes back where it came from, which means log of 2x plus 1 to the third minus log x to the fourth. And now going backwards, I know I have to have log of a ratio. The one with minus in front will go to the denominator. So x to the fourth will go to the denominator, and 2x plus 1 to the third will be in the numerator. It says condense. We condense. We can't do anything else. Next question, anything else? And we have to go back to a Gauss, um, uh, Gaussian elimination. With, yes. Do you have a problem for us, Mana? Any problem you want? I can do this one. Yes, uh, anyone. Any problem. Minus 2y. Oh, x in front. x in front plus 3z equals 4. And then 2x plus y minus 4z equals 3. And my negative 3x plus 4y minus z equals negative 2. Negative 2? Yes. Very good. Okay. So we want to show how to solve the system not using Gauss-Jordan, but using Gaussian elimination with back substitution. Gaussian elimination with back 
substitution. So what is the difference? The difference is this. So whatever these are, not the same. So then, so let's say this is one and two and three. Then z is three. I create an, a new equation in which I plug in z equals three. I create a new equation in which I plug in y and z and get x. So that's the idea. So let's write the um, augmented matrix. One, negative two, three, four. 2, 1, negative 4, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2. So we only want 1s on this diagonal and here zeros. That's all you want. And then we do the brute force. Okay? We only want the 1s here and the zeros here. And then we go back and create a new system and solve as if we start from scratch. Which is a good method, but I don't care for it, but if you if it's better for you, let's do it. So uh, one is there. I have to obtain the zeros here. So we will be using row one and multiply it by something to add to row two and multiply it by something to add it to row three. How do I eliminate the two? Multiplying by Very good. How do I eliminate a negative three? three? Very good. Awesome. So I copy one negative two, three, and four. So now one times negative two plus two. Perfect. Uh, one times negative, uh, negative two times negative two plus one. Very good. Awesome. Uh, three times negative two. Very good. Minus 4. Excellent. 4 times negative 2. Excellent. Plus 3. Excellent. Uh, 1 times 3 minus 3. Negative 2 times 3. Plus 4. Good. 3 times 3. Minus 1. 4 times 3. Minus 2. Excellent. So these are done. Now I need 1 here. How do I get 1 here? Very good. Divide row 2 by 5. So then we have 1, negative 2, 3, and 4. 0, 1, negative 2, negative 1. 0, negative 2, 8, and 10. Great job. So we have this, this, this. We have this. The only step we need for Gaussian elimination with back substitution is to get a 0 instead of negative 2. So what do we do to get a 0 instead of negative 2? row 2 by 2 and add it to row 3. Is that better? Perfect. So then 1, negative 2, 3, and 4. 0, 1, negative 2, negative 1. 1 times 2 minus 2 is 0. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Plus 8 is 4. Negative 1 times 2 is negative 2, plus 10 is 8. Now we know that z equals no doubt z equals indeed it's a divided by it's um, a divided by 4 which is 2 indeed. We agree with this? Yes? So if z is 2, then I have to create from here this equation that says y minus 2z equals negative 1 and plug in z. 
So y minus 4 equals negative 1, I'm sorry, which means y equals 3. And then we have to go back to the first equation and reestablish it as x minus 2y plus 3z equals 4, in which we replace the z by 2 and y by 3. So this is x minus 6 plus 6 equals 4, so x equals 4. So the solution appears to be 4, 3, and 2. And we have to go back and check. If you prefer this method, I'm fine. I think it's way more work because you are, you are, you are getting the zero here. Why not getting that zero as well? You are getting the one in here. Why not get the zeros right away? But I'm fine. If this is better for you, it's better for me too. Is this method clear? Anna, is this better? Me too, then. Yes. Are you recording right now? Yes, I am. <gasps> Thank you. Let me check. Let me check. Let me check. Yes, I am. So, um, <coughs> with uh, back, uh, Gaussian elimination with back substitution, you get the 1. You're going to get the 1 when you divide by 4. You only need the zeros here, but then you have to go back and create a new system. If it's better for you, it's better for me. Yes. Priscilla? Yes. That's a final exam. Yes. Yes. I did not forget. Yes. 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 You don't need it. I'm talking about the first day, first week of classes when we have top 101. Yes. I wrote it down. When is the opinion one to be biased? Not later than next week. It will be closed. So all I need you to show me is when in the middle of the of the page it says completed. That's all I need. I showed you that. You got it now? I can show you what the That's all I need. But it says completed. Can you control the chapter? Of course. Of course. Is this clear? Yes. Okay. Do you find this method better? Uh, it's better for me then. I wouldn't stop in the middle and change gear and, and ch do something else. But if you, if this is better for you, it's better for me. Which problem? One more time. Uh, yeah, number twelve. Okay, solving the uh, uh, logarithmic equation. So this is log base two of x plus six plus log base 2 of x plus 5 equals 1. This is a log equation. If you remember, I have to, in case you use this method, which you don't have to, by the way, but if you don't go back and check, you can get full credit. So it's one or the other. You either go back and check after you, you find the solution or solutions. Or you stay the domain. It's up to you, but you have to use one or the other. Is that clear? Okay, very good. So x plus 6 must be positive, x plus 5 must be positive. This is greater than negative 6, and this is greater than negative 5. What will be the common domain then when both are fulfilled? Indeed. I completely agree. Negative 5 to infinity. And now I have to condense. How do I condense? Log base 2 of equals. Excellent. And now this is equivalent to, remember, counterclockwise starting with the base. Raised to. So please don't say 2 times 1. Right? I'm not saying you did, but I'm just re-emphasizing. 2 raised to power 1 equals this. So 2 equals x squared plus 11x plus 30. I already multiplied it because I'm lazy. I don't want to write it again. But take a moment and see if this is clear.
Is it? Okay. So now this is quadratic. I expect how many solutions? Absolutely. Very good. Um, I'm missing the page number. Three, four, five. Okay, so this is x squared plus 11x plus 28 equals 0. I'm hoping for a quick solution, which means factoring quickly, which is what? Yes, I agree. x plus 4, x plus 7. I get two options. And I remember that I needed to check or look at the domain. If I look at the domain, I know that negative 4 is a yes, but negative 7 is a no. <coughs> Very good. The team. Exponential, we have a of t, 543.3 times e to 0 0.02 t. Use the model to determine so t equals 0, means 2003. Use the model to determine when the population of the country will be 733. Mill, million, million. Sorry. I'm sorry. Like when you were calculating. Yes. Log of not ten or something else in calculator. How do you do it? You can't. You have to use the change of base formula, unless your calculator has the option of putting whatever base you want. Some calculators may have that option. I don't know. I don't know which calculator has that option and which calculator does not. I'm not even sure whether the software I have um, has that option. It should be under math, I believe. Let's go to math and see. Yeah, do you have it? Yeah, it's on A on your still. I'm sorry? You just write down letter A. Log okay, base. log base, yeah. So you can put your base and uh, put 25, and the answer would be 2. Okay. However, you still have to remember the change of base formula because I may ask you to. Uh, here's the change of base formula. So if you want to find log base 7 of 3, you have natural log 3 over natural log 7, or log 3 over log 7. This is the change of base formula. Oh, of course not. My apologies. No number. An example of the change of base formula. We only have LN. There is nothing else with two letters, right? LN, my apologies, is LN. And LOG is LOG. Very good. We didn't finish our problem. Do we have other questions before we go back to it? OK, so then how do we address this? We are given um, a model, and we are told it models the population, blah, blah, blah. And we are asked to find when will the population be 733 million. Say again. Of course. 733 equals 543.3 e to 0 0.02 t. We are still working on 13. We haven't really just started it. Oh, okay.
Okay, so can anyone give us uh, the next step? Of course. I have to get rid of 543 points. You do not divide, you just write it. Next step. Excellent. Great job. Next step. Excellent. Excellent. Great job. Natural log 733 over 543.3. The right hand side is? We bring the power. We bring the power down. That's why we apply natural log, to bring the power down. And times natural log E, but we know that natural log E is? Excellent. That's why we don't even write it. Great job. Thank you for remembering that. By exactly. Great job. Brianna, thank you. Did Jose call you? Say it again. I just missed the whole part up there. Thank you. Applying natural log? Yeah. Just OK. Do we have it in the calculator? Yeah. Okay, how much is it? Uh, is it? I did not calculate. So, uh, 15? Did we get 15? Excellent. Okay, let's do that together. So be very careful how you put it in the graphing calculator. So we have natural log in parentheses, 733 divided by 543.3, close the parentheses and divide by 0 0.02, and enter. 14.97, so it's indeed 15 years. Completely agree. Good. Next problem, anything else you would like to work on? And I don't know if I, did I give you this that I gave out today? No. Thank you. Um, this is the final review. Did I give this to you? Yes, already. Um, and yes. <laughs> okay, ready? Next problem. Anything else you would like to? Yes, Priscilla? Number 14. Number 14 it is. Let's take a look. So we have uh, the logistic function, <laughs> growth model, 110,000. I thought we did this last time, but maybe not. We did it together with the horizontal asymptote, I remember. Yeah. So I uh, described the number of people who became ill with the, with the flu two weeks after its initial outbreak. How many big people became ill with the flu when the epidemic began? And how many at the end of the fourth week? And what is the limiting size of the population? Of course, I'm going to plug it in. I'm not going to do any calculations by hand. I go to y equals, and I put in 110,000. Since the numerator has only one term, it's OK if I don't put parentheses around it. But the denominator absolutely requires parentheses. And then e raised to, please put the power in parentheses, negative x. Close the parentheses for the power, come down and close the parentheses for the denominator. And then go to second and table set. As you know, I have to reset everything here all the time. OK, it goes back to default. So I plug in 0, I plug in 4, 
And then it says the limiting size. Okay, 10 weeks later, 20 weeks later, 40 weeks later, 50 weeks later, 60 weeks later. That's the limiting size of the population. So for the first, the first answer would be 20 people. Second answer would be 1,101. And then limiting size of the population is 110,000, which represents what? The whole, whole horizontal asymptote, which is indeed, as Steve said, the entire population. Assuming this is, there is an assumption here that nobody's visiting and nobody's leaving, which is kind of stretching it, but that's the assumption. So f of 0 was 20 people. Uh, f of 4 was 1101 people. And we write this. As t approaches infinity, f of t will approach uh, 110,000, which means y 110,000 is the horizontal asymptote. Well done. The function? This function. So 110. It's that 110,000 divided by. Is that what you meant? I just copied the function in. Yep. So the limiting size is the 100,000. If we put in 50 weeks, 60 weeks, 70 weeks, any number of weeks beyond a certain number, it will be just 110. You cannot have more uh, of the entire population. So let's say in this room we are 15 people and we are isolated from everybody else. How many maximum can get sick? All of us, 15. And then you said that the the represents the function? No, it represents the function value when time increases without bound. 10 weeks later, 15 weeks later, 100 weeks later, we cannot have more than 15 sick, sick people. Assuming nobody comes in to visit and we don't go out. Is that better? Do you remember yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So for some reason, the sh of course you're going to have the graph. So this is from uh, 5.1. I'll tell you which problem in a second. Thank you. Sorry about that. It's problem uh, 55. There's a cost and revenue. Cost and revenue 55 on page 556. I'll make sure you have the graphs, of course. My apologies. It's sometimes, as I mentioned, when I send a PDF file to the testing center for copy, the graph disappears. I'm not really sure why. It's not always the case. It's just that just happens randomly. So we have C of X uh, equals 10,000 plus 30X. Yes, of course, sorry. And um, R of X is 50X. So we're asked to find um, uh, how many uh, should be produced uh, in order for the company to break even. For break even, we mean the profit is zero. In other words, money coming in, revenue, goes all for costs. There's zero profit. We get, pro we get revenue and we spend it on costs, because profit is zero. That's the break-even point, which means cost equals revenue. So let's solve the system. Cost equals revenue. And please tell me what you get.
So we get that x equals, is it? I don't disagree. Uh, if three people tell me, my grandma used to say, but she wasn't referring to drunk people, but she would say, if two people tell you you're drunk, don't dispute it. Go to bed. <laughs> so if three people tell me 500, I'm not disputing it must be true. That's all I meant. So the break even point is 500 comma, and this must be the revenue of 500. Can anyone give us the revenue of 500? Correct. That's what it means. Revenue of 500, it means, yep. So 25 and three zeros. Very good. Is there anything else that we need to do from this before we start reviewing for the final exam? Yeah. Oh, okay. Better? That's how we get the break-even point. X comma revenue of X, of that particular X. Is it 160,000? No, because 50 times 500 is 25,000. Yes, of course. Is that clear, Manu? But is it R, R. It's 50. It doesn't matter. If you go back into this one, you have to get the same answer. They are the same. If you plug in 500 in here, you have to get 25,000. There is no discussion. They must be the same. We set them equal to each other to get 500. If we don't get the same answer, 500 is wrong. Okay, I have to wrong. Is that better? Can you start from the beginning of problem one more time? Say it again. Let me start from the beginning one more time. Of this problem? I said this equal to this. And I solve the linear equation. 10,000 plus 30x equals 50x. I subtract. 10,000 equals 20x. And x equals 500. Dividing both sides by 20. And that's how we get 500, which is this. And an R of 500, 50 times 500. So R of 500. 50 times 500, 25,000, and this is the answer for the y coordinate of the break even point. Is that better? Tony, is this okay? I think so. Everyone? Yeah. Okay. I forgot what, what I was supposed to do the next. next. Number one. Number one. Very good. In number one, we have uh, g of x. Negative 7 raised to x plus 1 plus 49. All these problems come from what you worked on in my math lab. All of them. I copied each and every one of them from, from my math lab. Okay, so here we're asked to use transformations, go step by step, present each step, find the x and y intercepts, find the asymptotes, uh, find the uh, x and y intercepts algebraic. So first I have to identify the base function. So for this, the base function is here's our say it again. Excellent, of course. That's the base function. Great job. Thank you, Tiffany. Okay, step one. First transformation on 7 to the x in order of operations. Say it again. There is no second power here. So you mean 7 raised to x plus 1, and in, indeed, left 1. Great job. Great job. Number 2. Yes. Yes. The minus in front, 7 to x plus 1, it is a reflection. Awesome. With respect to... Awesome. Step 3, final step. Negative 7 to x plus 1 plus 49. Very good. I forgot how you know like, which axis is being reflected. Very good. Excellent. If the minus touches x then it's a reflection with respect to the y-axis. If the minus touches y, not x, it's a reflection with respect to the x-axis. This negative 
does not touch X. It's completely outside of everything. Yes, it would have been here, it would have been a reflection with respect to the Y axis. Because I'm talking about negative 7 turning to 7. Or 7, I don't want to say 7 because I don't want you to. Uh, um, positive 2 change into negative 2. Or negative 3 change into positive 3. But since I have the negative is completely disconnected from X, it means that it's a transformation in Y. Well done. Okay, so now I have to remember how to graph this. Exponential function with a base greater than 1. Increasing, decreasing, how does it look? Increasing. Yes. Increasing on all its domain, and it will cross at 0, 1. Great job. Perfect. This is indeed 7 to the x, and it must cross at 1, because it's a pure exponential function. Great job. You told me that I have to shift this left 1. So please give me my reference point. Where does this point go? to the left one. So it will go right here at negative 1, 1. Great job. <laughs> then you told me to do what with this function? Yes. Give me the star, the um, reference point. Where does it go? Yes, where? Negative 1, comma, negative 1. Great job. So this is negative 7 raised to x plus 1. All these three functions have a horizontal asymptote. Can anyone tell us which asymptote? Yes, y equals 0. Final step, you wanted me to shift this graph where? Which means that the horizontal asymptote will go where? Excellent. So assuming that this is 49, forgive me, it's not 49, but I don't have enough room there. Please tell me where does this go? This is, this is what I have to shift up. Negative 1, 48. Excellent. So this point is negative 1, 48 indeed. So here's the graph. So this is final, this one is final. Negative 7 raised to x plus 1 plus 49. Great job. 1 plus 48. 49. Okay. Better? Yeah, so when, on the exam, are they going to have to state that negative 1 plus 1? No, but you have to show it. Yeah. 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 It, yeah. yeah. But it's good to show it because it's, if, see, if it's something like this, I don't want to really count. I don't care for the count. If you just show me negative 148, I'm fine. Otherwise, you... Yeah. How did you get your points? I'm sorry? I'm not sure how you got your, your points. Well, this one is shifting left one. So that's why I get this point goes left one. Mm -hmm. From here, I reflect on the over the x-axis. So if this is pos positive one, it will be net at negative one. And if I shift this graph 49 up, it goes to negative 148. Better? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Can anyone give us the range and the domain of this function? Excellent. It's an exponential function. Never creates problems. Say it again. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about that. And the range? To positive 49 with parentheses. Very good. Negative infinity to 49 with a parentheses. Great job. I want to find the x and y intercepts algebraically. 
how do I find the x-intercept? Yes, said y equal to 0, which is negative 7x plus 1 plus 49 equals 0. Let's think about it and identify the steps. Yes, of course. I heard it. What do I have to do? Oh, yes, of course I subtract 49. Good. Then, say it again. If this is a, if it's a radical equation, then I have to, or if it's a uh, quadratic, I take the square root. But if it's not quadratic, I cannot take the square root. What will be the next step? By? I cannot remove the, the base from the power. That's not possible. But I have to do something else before I continue. I cannot apply log to a negative number. I don't have parentheses, so I'm not raising negative 7 to x plus 1. I can't. I have to do one more step. You're on the right track, but I need one more step. You don't multiply each side by negative one. Of course. I have to get rid of the negative sign. Excellent. Thank you, Steve. Of course. Both sides are negative. I need to eliminate that. I need to clean it up. And yes, perfectly, I have to change 49 into 7 squared, of course. Both sides are equal. They have the same base what must happen next, for sure. I don't know why I wrote two here. I'm sorry. My, my apologies. My apologies. My apologies. I talk too, too much. Sorry. Sorry. So what has to happen then? I have to write something for everyone to see. Very good. So then x equals? Excellent. So then 1 comma 0 is the x-intercept. So then how do I find the y-intercept? Very good. So f of 0. Let's do this together. 0 plus 1. 7 to the first power. With minus in front. Negative 7 plus 49. 42, very good. So 0, 42 is this point right here. 0, 42. Well done. This was not an easy problem. It had a lot of steps.